Hello everybody and welcome back to Noia Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noia Dev I'm going to try and update to the newest version of Unity and UMMO without breaking everything. Let's get into this. So I knew that I was going to eventually have to update my Unity version and as well as my UMMO version uh, at some point. I just didn't know when and I was constantly pushing back that, uh, that task more and more and more and it's just a problem for a future day to deal with. But anyway, this isn't something that's completely new to me. I've actually done this uh, once or twice now. Updating to new Unity versions isn't exactly difficult. They've actually made it incredibly easy. Essentially just download the newest version of Unity and then try and open your project in it and it will just tell you, hey, you need to update. Are you sure you want to do this? Things can break. That's what Unity sounds like. You click yes, and off it goes. UMMO is a bit more complicated than that. There's another piece to this, and that is Mirror. UMMO and Mirror are two different pieces of Noia. UMMO is the gameplay framework where Mirror is all of the netcode side of things. They're both developed by the same team. Both Mirror and UMMO come as a package deal. While I'm okay with understanding netcode stuff, I much prefer to leave it to people who understand it a lot more than I do, which is one of the reasons that I went with UMMO to begin with. The fact that UMMO is also developed by the same person who is also making Mirror was just a no-brainer to me. Before starting, I made sure to make a complete copy of the entire project. The way I do this is I will spin up a brand new project on the recommended Unity version and download the latest version of UMMO. I then take a free piece of software called Code Compare made by devart.com and what this does is I can take my current project and the updated project and put them side by side and this program intelligently compares each individual method or line of code and will then highlight differences between the two. I can then easily click these buttons left or right to decide on which copy of the code I would like to keep. Thankfully the UMMO dev leaves notes all over the place in his code so I'm very well informed as to what each method is doing here. UMMO is set up in a way that allows you to create what are called add-ons and you essentially bolt on your code into UMMO using the Unity event system. While you can get away with almost everything with the Unity event system System. There are some things that you just can't and you need to make changes to the core UMMO code. And whenever I do that, I add a little note of my own with my initials here and what my changes are. So when running updates from one UMMO version to another, it's easy for me to tell which changes are mine and which changes are the UMMO devs that I need to port over. Anything that has my initials over it, I need to keep. And anything that doesn't, I need to update. This is also a great exercise that got me to essentially get neck deep into the UMMO code and essentially learn what every single function of this architecture does. So I don't mind doing this as it's a great refresher on everything that is UMMO. Thankfully Mirror was pretty much all just copied directly from the update over. I don't really touch anything in Mirror ever because it scares me. There were only a few variables in Mirror that I had to update to their newest versions, and it was time to test. Upon launching Unity again, there were definitely some angry red errors, and most of those had to do with the variable updates from Mirror. So those were pretty easy to knock out. And then it was time to test. And it launched, and then it crashed the moment I tried to hit something. This freaked me out because I was reading through the error logs and it was essentially telling me that the entire skill system was broken. And I did not like that because the skill system was something that I had tinkered around in. And I was wondering if my changes were no longer compatible. Digging into it a little further, I ran into the reason why. And it was my fault. Remember a devlog or so ago, I detailed how I had updated the skill system to use 
skill hash numbers instead of index numbers. Apparently didn't test that thoroughly enough and upon launching the new updated version of Noia those bugs came to light. These things were not caused by the update for UMMO, they were caused by me and I just never caught them because I didn't test thoroughly enough. I had only tested in the Unity editor, I never compiled the code as a separate client and server, and so these bugs never would have been found. One of the very first things that I did after updating Mirror and UMMO and Unity to the latest versions was compile into uh, WebGL, because I need to make sure Noia can run in a browser. That's probably its biggest selling point. So when I did that and discovered this crash, I realized that I had not tested thoroughly enough previously when I made changes to the skill system and now those bugs were coming to light. Thankfully, it was a very easy fix. And after I made that fix, everything worked great. So the current version of UMMO is version 2.3. Mirror is version 50, and Unity is version 2021.2.8. And we're moving up to UMMO version 2.12, Mirror version 70, and Unity 2021.3.9. So there's some major updates happening. The biggest of which is Mirror is now multi-threaded. Unity itself runs in a single thread. Mirror does not have to, so now each individual player will get their own thread to communicate back and forth with the server on, which is huge. Now that everything was up to date and the latest and greatest, it was time to get back to work. First thing I did is do another detail pass on uh, the starter map here. I added a second layer to all of the walls so they look a little bit more detailed. I added different crystal colors here for each different zone. The beginning area and the swamp is red, the NPC camp is purple, poison pool area is green, and then moving up to the queen's chamber is blue. I planted a lot more trees so you can see those here. They are all 3D objects so they stand up a little bit from the terrain so when you move past them you get a little bit of parallel adds a little bit of depth to the game. Still not 100% sure what I want to do with the NPC area here. I've got a few ideas in my head, so I need to create a couple of more NPCs and add them and see if it looks as good as I think it will. So, look forward to that next time. I also have done a first pass at, a cup, at the couple of starter items that will be available to the player upon starting and I need to get the skills for the the weapon skills for these items up and working. Aside from the starter items, I've also been working on the quest line that's going to take the player through the map and all the dialogue on that. Unfortunately, it's just words on a page right now, nothing to really show for it. So that's it for this week. Uh, YouTube has been absolutely crazy in the last two weeks and has been apparently pushing devlogs really, really hard. So if you've subscribed from that, thanks again. It definitely helps the channel grow. Feel free to join the Discord. It's where a lot of discussions happen and how a lot of the ideas that I get for Noia kind of take place. And you get to see my daily progress there where I post in a No Zero Days channel. And that's it. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.